Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am back to make another alternative using the January 2021 Paper Pumpkin Kit. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. The newest paper pumpkin kit, the January 2021 Sending Hearts Edition showed up in my mailbox over the weekend and I was so inspired to get it out and start using it. The cards that you make themselves following the instructions are totally adorable, but I did want to see what else I could create with the kit. Today, I will be using some of the leftovers from the cards I shared yesterday to create two slimline cards. On the screen now is a look at the two clear cards I made as alternatives using this kit. I will link that video in the description box below if you want to find out more. To create my cards today, I'll mainly just be using items that came in the kit. Besides what you see in front of me here on my desktop, I will be using the Poppy Parade ink cube that came with the kit. And I'll be using all of the little like sentiment die cuts and scallop borders and that stuff. I will also be using two pieces of just heavyweight white cardstock from my stash to create those slimline card bases. If I add anything later on in the video besides what I've mentioned here, I will let you know. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! So to get started on today's cards, like normal, I will be doing a majority of the cutting. The first thing I'm going to do is cut two pieces of white cardstock into one piece that is seven inches wide. And then that little scrap on the left, I'm going to cut down to three and a quarter inches wide by eight and a quarter inches tall. Now this piece isn't necessarily a must have. I just thought it was easier to put the card together later. Once those pieces are cut, I'm going to fold the first piece I cut in half, and this will be my slimline card base. When that's folded, it is eight and a half inches wide by three and a half inches tall. Next, I brought in the two scraps from yesterday's clear cards, and I'm going to cut these each so they're three and a quarter inches wide and leave the height as is. Once I've cut those down to three and a quarter inches, I take the leftover scrap from each. I cut those to three and a quarter inches wide as well, and then I want to cut those in half, but because the strip is so skinny, I really won't be able to hold it in place while I do the cutting. So I brought in my Scotch Blue Removable Tape, and I'm just going to use a small piece of that to tack that piece to the cutter while I do the cutting. Now this piece can be reused over and over again. I basically reuse these until they fall apart. For my cards today, I'm going to pretty much stick with the layout that Paper Pumpkin provided in the instructions. I will just be extending it for a slimline card. I got out the elements that I need to stamp and that's what I'm going to do now. I am using a Sizzix pad for some cushioning under the stamps just to get a nice crisp impression. I stamp both of the little label pieces with the words that I need and then I'm going to stamp my heart onto the heart card. I do ink that up very well and before I bring it to the piece of pattern paper or to that little cardstock piece, I'm going to huff or blow moist air on that stamp. This is something I learned years ago, I'm not sure if I even have to do it. Let me know below if you still huff on your stamps to make sure that ink is nice and juicy. Now it's time to put together that first card. I got out the other elements from the kit as well as the pieces I had cut and stamped. Before I start putting the card together, I do need to do a little bit more cutting. And because now my pieces are smaller, I just pulled in my little Fiskars bypass trimmer. 
I cut the black scallop from the kit so it's the same width as my red piece which is three and a quarter inches wide. Then because I need that red pattern paper to fill my white piece of cardstock from top to bottom, I am going to just cut that down. I cut it almost in half, not quite, because that mailbox later will cover the opening. I added adhesive to the back of each of the red pattern papers and those got adhered aligned to the top and the bottom of my white cardstock strip. Now I am only using this white cardstock base so I can pop the entire decorated piece up off the front of my slimline card. You are free, you don't have to do that. You could just put these pieces right on your three and a half by eight and a half card base. I wanted to add some extra decoration to the mailbox piece, so I will be putting the black scallop strip on the back of that, as well as the striped pattern from the opposite card. Now, I originally accidentally put the scallop on first, and I realized that isn't what I wanted to do, so I put the striped pattern paper on the back of my mailbox card, and then I adhered that scallop piece in place. This next part deviates a little bit from the Stampin' Up! sketch. Instead of just putting a bow on the front, I am going to wrap the ribbon around that card and then I cut off a smaller piece and I tie that off in a knot around the ribbon I had just placed. You might have noticed that I put some adhesive on the back of the card and that's just to hold the ribbon in place until I can get it placed onto the card with other adhesive. And speaking of other adhesive, that is what I did next. I added adhesive to the back of the decorated piece and this got placed on my cardstock strip. Now I ended up leaving a little less of the red at the top of the card. I just thought this was more appealing to the eye. And now making its grand entrance is my big blue roll of foam tape in the three quarter inch width. You know I love these big blue rolls of foam tape and I'm so glad now that I have different widths. I placed two strips of this on the back of the decorated card and once I pulled the release paper I got it centered onto my card base. Now with this foam tape I did have to fiddle with it a little bit. Make sure not to stick it down too hard until you have it exactly where you want it. Once that piece was all centered on the card front, I brought in my sentiment label. Now on the original sketch, you would pop this up off the card, but because I already have dimension on that whole strip, I did just adhere this flat down. To finish the card, I took one of the medium size enamel hearts from the kit and placed that on the envelope. When I create a slimline card, I often get asked what kind of envelopes I use to mail them in. And I'm just going to be honest, I use regular business envelopes that I have bought at the Dollar Tree. Now because these aren't very fancy, I decided that I would add some decoration to it. What I did was grab the snail stamp from the stamp set with the kit, I inked that up, stamped it off on a scrap of cardstock, and then stamped it onto the envelope. This just adds a nice touch and it's a customized envelope for the card. While I was at it, I decided that I would add a little decoration to the inside of the card, so I inked that stamp up once again and stamped my snail in the lower right hand corner of the inside. And here's a look at the finished card. And now it's time to put together the second card. This is pretty much the same thing, except when I bring in my bypass trimmer this time, I only need to cut down the pattern paper, not the black scallop stripped, because that is already set up for the card size. I will continue to voice over my process in a little bit when things change, but for now I thought we could just chat. Now make sure that you keep watching because my cat Linden does make a special appearance. I thought that starting in 2021, I would try to have a QOTV or a question of the video where I would ask you something and then you can reply in the comments below. Make sure that if you do answer the question of the video, that you use the hashtag, hashtag QOTV. That way I know that you were paying attention and you wanted me to see your answer. Today's QOTV is, have you ever either received as a gift 
or bought for yourself a paper pumpkin kit to put together? If so, was it cards? Was it some kind of packaging or a different item? Let me know below what you got and what you thought about it. I myself have subscribed to Paper Pumpkin probably four or five different times, but in the last couple years, I have gotten pretty much every kit. I usually end up buying a 12 month prepaid plan because I'm not a demonstrator, so I do want to save some money. And the great thing is the credits just stay in my online account. And if I know that I don't want to get a certain month, I can just pause my account for that month. Very handy to do. If you haven't tried out Paper Pumpkin and you think it's something you might like to do, if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I will link my demonstrator site below. It's Chelsea Christensen, and you can check out a kit and see what you think for yourself. And here is Lyndon. If you'll notice, I was the consummate professional crafter. I did keep putting on my enamel hearts before I took the time to get her off the desk. But anyway, let's get back to crafting. Here is where I'm going to switch up this second card just a little bit. And that is when I decorate the envelope and the inside of the card. Just like last time, I will be stamping on both. And for the envelope, I'm gonna use the big heart stamp from the kit, stamp that off on that scrap of cardstock, and then bring it to the envelope. Now for the inside, I chose the stamp that resembles the little flowers and hearts on the corners of the card. And I ink that up and I stamp it twice on the inside of the card, once in the top left and the bottom right hand corner. And here's a look at that finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I created today's alternatives, including how I decorated the envelopes and the inside of the cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget, if you want to see more alternatives for the January 2021 Paper Pumpkin Kit, to hit that subscribe button below if you're not already. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.